Cool, awesome. We're back here. And uh, if you guys haven't catched the first episode, you might want to go back and catch the episode before this. It kind of, <clears throat> it leads up to where we're at now. And we have John Schwartz here from Perfectionist. And of course, I'm Charlie and it's my amazing wife, Athena. And, uh, you know, we're here uh, just kind of telling our life stories and what's kind of going on. And uh, John's been a big part of our uh, success in our company. Um, we are going to be 25 years old. John's company is 25 years old, so we only have like a four or five month gap between when our company started and when John did. So been a definite partner all the way through um, between helping our stereo systems to enhancing our stereo systems for our limos uh, to the auto starts to everything that goes on electronically. Like we'd get some of these limo manufacturers that would have some mess ups in their things and John would have to try to de dissect it. So <laughs> it when I tell you everything that has to do with a 12 volt system, John has been our go-to person, yeah. even like two hours before our limo goes out, we have a stereo goes out and we take it to John and say, we can't get it on there. Mean, 20 minutes, bro. Come yeah, I, I, I see two hours because we've been trying to figure it out two hours before we gave go. it to you 20 minutes before the trip. Yeah. And John <laughs> happens to have that same head unit and yeah. it would be able to install it in like 15 minutes for us because he knows that we don't want to lose out in that revenue That's nor right. do we want to give a, a limo bus out that doesn't have a stereo and there's no prediction when these things are going to go out. It That's just right. happens. So yes, yeah. just that partnership we have with him. So as we're going to talk about this, we're really going to start talking about mentorships and some of the people that have really impacted our lives as we have kind of gone through this 24, 25 year version of our companies and where it's ended us up. And as, as we're trying to do this for you guys out there in the world, that to kind of give you guys some hope and some other things that are going there and some guidance and nuggets, nuggets is my word, what you can take out of this. So John, just tell us about your entrepreneurship and mm. where some of the uh, mentors in your life have helped you kind of go through where you're through your high times, your low times and your on mm. top of your times. So. Well, yeah, no, I appreciate all that, man. Um, you know, I it's kind of funny because off camera we had said, you know, uh, like talking about children and stuff, you know, normal people, things that we can use. And, you know, so I, uh, you know, my crazy story got up here and stuff. I met my uh, my ex-wife, unfortunately, uh, way back. She worked at Cars. And uh, anyway, I thought she was so good looking. I'd always flirt with her, blah, blah, blah. And then finally got to go on a date with her. And then she tells me on our first date, she has a couple of kids. And, you know, you know, 17, 18, like, what? Yeah, man, you know, whatever. But, but I, I really liked her a lot, and I thought it was great. And uh, anyway, so like on our third date, I met these kids, and I fell in love with them. And then now I've been their dad 30 years, you know. And so a lot of times people say, man, how'd you do it, man? How did you how'd you stay motivated? How'd you stay excited, you know? So I had my youngest daughter when I had turned 21, right? Literally, so my 21st birthday, I'm at home feeding the baby. I didn't get to go out and party. And, um, that's when you lived off Lake Otis. That's when I, well, yeah, way back. Yeah. I, I remember going over to your house. Yeah. Yeah. Like, man, a million years ago, you know, yeah, you took the kids out yeah. for one of the birthdays or something. But, you know, and at that time in my life, you know, I was working two jobs. I was actually working on the airport. I was working at Safe and Sound and making like eight bucks an hour both, you know, trying to figure it out. And, uh, then I had this opportunity with to go work for CopyStar and then, you know, ask for 15 yeah. bucks an hour and all this stuff. And, uh, you know, pushing and reading books and doing this and doing that. And then people say, what are you so, mo how are you so motivated? And I was like, man, these damn kids drink so much milk and eat so much food. I got, I got to figure out how to like feed them, you know? They were and your why at the time. They were, they were my why. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we were, mm -hmm. we were on WIC. We were on like daycare assistance. I mean, everything they could have. And, um, and I was like, you know, so I have this, I guess, kind of a crazy story. So me and uh, Lori, her name is, we had moved in right when I had turned 18. And I never, you know, left my, I, you know, left my mama's house and moved in. And now I had like an instant family. And uh, one of the things that has carried me through all these years was uh, I was 18, wasn't making any money. And I couldn't buy a turkey for my family. It was our first Thanksgiving together, living together. You know, you were 18. 18. Yeah. I didn't know nothing. You know, And, and I, yeah, I just, you know, but I was like, I got to get a turkey. And I didn't, and I couldn't do it. I just, we just said that, you know, I was paying rent. I didn't know what any of this stuff was. And uh, I remember I was like. You know, I just felt like an inch tall, like I'm not a man. I'm not taking care of my, my family. And I remember I was just so low. It was the week of Thanksgiving, and I was like, oh, my God, man. I, you know, I can't even go home and look at them. You know, I felt so ashamed. And then Terry backs into the shop, and this whole bed's full of turkeys. And then he's like, John, come here, grab a turkey. And I was like, what's this for? And he's like, oh, no, I felt like buying everybody turkeys this year. And oh my God, man, like I like cried because uh, you don't, he doesn't know what he, he had no idea. He had no idea. And it changed me and I, I changed my life. And, uh, so when I got to perfectionist, I had told Jason, Hey man, we gotta, we gotta do this. And I told him the story. So every single year I've bought turkeys for everybody. And I tell everybody the story every year, you know? So I think that those, 
those moments, like at that time in my life, my children were the why of everything. You know, I wanted to make sure that they had everything that they could have. And, you know, even though we didn't really have much of anything, you know, but then, you know, as you move forward and it's like the kids become people, right. You know, like your kids are getting older now and they're like, they're very inde yeah, ones. they're independent, you know, blah, 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 you know, and you love them. You don't like them all the time, you know, but we tell the yeah. same thing. I love you, but I don't like you. I don't right like now. you right now, you know? So then, you know, it's like you get to this point where the why changes and then now it's more for like, I don't know, you know, it's the most rewarding thing for me at this moment is seeing my team buy their house or buy a new car or get to this next level. And it's just, man, that's so awesome because you know, you, you help them, you you're created a new, you're a part of it. Yeah. yeah. So through the years, we're talking about mentors and different things. I feel like everybody goes through just different seasons of what you need. So when I first got there at 22, I needed, I didn't know what I needed from a mentor. So that's why I read so many books. And then I would get those nuggets and, you know, something like, uh, like Seth Goodwin, he's the one that said, uh, talking about sneezers. And then, you know, you got the John Maxwell's and you got, you know, the Robert Kiyosaki's and all this stuff. And, um, anyway, in, uh, through that journey, I remember that whenever I was very imp like, uh, impressed with somebody, I would ask him about the lunch and I would like, you know, like have, let's have a client that comes in and he's always mm -hmm. cool and he just seems put together and I would just say, man, hey man, is there any way I could take out the lunch next week, man? I did, I would just love to pick your brain. And what I love about successful people is most successful people love to talk because they know they struggled, you know, compared to someone that like inherited it, you know, or something, but somebody that really built their company and they love to talk if they got the time, you know? So I remember I got, um, and so I remember back when I was talking about in 09 when the economy crashed and all this stuff. So I, uh, that 2008, nine season before everything was bad. And, you know, I'm, I was a millionaire now cause I, you know, I made my first, yeah, million, you know. first million. I had taken a, a client, one of our friends, uh, Clyde, you remember? Yeah, Clyde <laughs> yeah. We all went to Vegas and uh, we went, I think we were down there for CES and, uh, you know, I'm an owner, the the yeah, I'm an owner, you know, made a million bucks, blah, blah, blah. And at the time, you know, we're, it's winter time. So we were doing really well. And uh, anyway, we were out in the clubs and we had so much fun in Vegas. I ended up spending like 15 grand. Okay. I didn't think about it. It didn't even bother me because I felt like we were okay. Anyway, like I get back to Anchorage and about a month later, uh, the CPA calls me and she's like, Hey John, um, what are these expenses for? And I was like, Oh, I was entertaining a client, you know, and all this stuff. And then, okay, uh, I'll give you a call back. And I was like, Oh, hmm, that's not good. This doesn't sound like, well, did I make a mistake? You know? And then like, an hour later, Jason calls me and this guy is furious. He is cussing me out, screaming at me. How irresponsible are you? What do you, who do you think you are? Blah, blah, blah. All, and, I'm, and in my head, I'm like, what did I do? You know, like we're making money. And, but it, it was really, it was way too much. I mean, obviously I, I should have never spent that much money. So anyway, what happened is I got put on to such a tight leash. Uh, I couldn't spend a dollar without getting a, approval from him first. Now, even though I was the owner, that's the only thing to save my job, realistically, because he couldn't fire me now because I'm an owner now. Yeah. So anyway, um, so going into 09 and 10, like we were we were really starting to excel now. Like people were starting to know about us and all kind of stuff. And um, so I remember, like I said, every single dollar we got, uh, I got watched on and I got invited. We won this uh, Retailer of the Year Award for a brand that we carried. So they were like, hey, we're gonna fly you down to Vegas you just got to get here, but we'll pay for hotel Flashbacks food. Right yeah, now. everything. Yeah. yeah. I'm like, I'm like, Oh man, <laughs> Jason's going to call me. No, <laughs> but, um, anyway, it, so the plane ticket back then, I was like 400 bucks and I was like, man, I got invited to this thing. Can I go, you know, they're going to pay for everything. And, and, uh, man, he, it was really hard to even get 400 bucks for a plane really? ticket. Oh, and he was so mad at me. You don't even understand. Cause it, it for him is like, I lied to him. Like I was disrespectful to it, you know, and, and he's Asian, I'm Asian. So it's just, you know, it's just heavy. Anyway, so I uh, go down to this thing, it's an 09, and I meet this guy named uh, Marcel, and he's from Canada, and I met another guy named Brian, he's from Arizona, and they had did a presentation, and I was so impressed with it, you know, like Marcel's the guy that talked about the camera in the showroom, and he would, you know, money's a side effect of amazing yeah. service, and all these things, and I remember, you know, the room, there was probably 100 guys in the room that were there for this training, maybe a little bit more. And after the class, I walked up to him, you know, I'm just this young kid. You know, nobody knows me from Alaska, nothing. And I said, man, I need you to come to Alaska. Or I was like, me and you are going to be, be good friends, man, because 
I need to be around you, man. Like, what yeah. can I do? And he's kind of looking at me like, you know, who the heck are you? You know, I'm a speaker. Little, little playing on Yeah, you know? I'm a speaker, you know. And I was like, I'm serious, man. What do I need to do to, like, get around you? Like, I want to I want to be around you more. And then, you know, so we change, exchange information and stuff. And then Brian comes up. And then Brian, he's a, one of the baddest fabricators on the planet. And I told him the same thing. Hey, man, me and you are going to be really good friends, man. I need to, I need to know you. And, and he used to travel around. So I was like, how much would it cost for you to come to Alaska? Like, we really need some help. We need to get to the next level. And uh, so anyway, by by just kind of fighting through the crowd and meeting these guys, I ended up getting Brian and Marcel to come to Alaska. And um, we changed up our whole business, like remodeled, learned so much stuff, did all these things. And then the next year, we uh, – so I'm still in trouble, obviously, with everybody. But the next year, we got invited to uh, our big event. It's called Knowledge Fest. And we were up for retailer of the year for North America. And so we made it to the top 12, all this stuff. So I remember this is the first year that uh, CompuStar also went to the show. And for years before this, I was always asking Jason, hey, can I go to Knowledge Fest? And he's like, no, I'm all the knowledge you need. You don't need to go. And so finally, now we're up for retailer of the year. So I was like, well, my sister lives in Texas. I can stay at her house. I don't need a car. I don't need this. I just need a plane ticket. And I scrounged together the you know 400 bucks for a plane ticket and got there. And I remember I was at the show, and uh, they had a booth there. And I remember calling Jason or texting him and said, man, the booth looks awesome. And he's like, where are you at? You know? And I was like, uh, I'm in Dallas. And he's like, what are you doing there? You didn't authorize this. I didn't tell you you could go, blah, blah, blah. And he had told me, uh, man, I'm so sick of the shop. I want to sell it. I don't want, I don't want to be part of the shop anymore. I can't take it anymore. It's so stressful. And I'm like, well, then sell me the shop. You know? And he's like, what do you mean sell you the shop? And I'm like, I've been running the place for like the last 10 years. You might as well just you know, give it to me, you know? So anyway, I had set a goal for myself at 35 to win Retailer of the Year and then to buy Jason out. So this was three weeks before my 35th birthday. And then I was at my sister's house walking around her pool and we closed the deal. So I ended up buying the shop from him. And, um, you know, he gave me the absolute best deal you could get with the, the absolutely lowest interest rate you possibly could get. And um, so we closed the deal in 30 minutes. And then that night went back to the show and then I uh, remember we were at the very, very back of the, the banquet, the very last table, because nobody knew who any of us were. And it was the CompuStar guys. It was me, my sister, my brother-in-law, Brian. And I think Marcel was there as well. And then they announced that, you know, we won the top retailer, you know, retailer of the year for the first time. And I remember at that moment, you know, we were just screaming because CompuStar ended up winning top vendor. We won retailer of the year. All this stuff happened. And the the the, Dude, the ink's not even dry yet. Yeah, the ink's not even dry. And the funny part was Jason was so mad and hated perfectionist so much at the time, but then we were the best in the country, you know. And um, but I I really believe that with you know Jason's guidance and his push, and then meeting Marcel and Marcel is one of the most phenomenal business people I've ever met. You know, like this guy's in a, a circle with the president of Lululemon. You know, so I mean, multi-billion-dollar like company. Inner circle. Right, like yeah. it's called the Presidents Club or something like that. And he he's helped start multiple, you know, nine-figure companies and all kind of crazy things. And you know, I fly down to Vancouver probably once a year to go hang out with them, and I feel great because I have access to these people. Yeah. So, so the funny thing we talk about, rich dad, poor dad. Um, there's this guy, and we had talked about some of the things. So in 2019. Um, that was my 20th anniversary, and I said, you know what, I'm going to invest in myself. And like how you guys do all your circle things, so I was like, I'm going to invest in myself. Right. So I went to all the the big guys, Tony Robbins, you know, Grant Cardone, and all these different, all these events I could find. And the cool thing is I had met this guy named Keith Cunningham. He's in Austin, Texas, and this guy is a phenomenal business owner. He owns like seven companies, does like $100 million a year. And um, anyway, he is, it's funny because he is actually the guy that taught Robert Kiyosaki everything. So he is the real rich dad, poor dad. And then Robert Kiyosaki wrote the book, but it's all Keith stuff. And so when you're in the Keith's class, you never can bring up that book because he gets so mad because he kind of stole it from him, you know? Sure. But that was a really phenomenal thing I got to be part of because um, you're around these amazing business owners and it's every level. I mean, you got guys that are like a half a million in revenue up to 250 million in revenue. Yeah. and. You know, it's just amazing to, um, to, get, to get around that. And then so they had this amazing thing called the boardroom where you could be part of it. And they, so basically you fly into Austin, they have a big round table and there's like 16 business, 16 people at the table and Keith's at the head. He's a chairman. Mm -hmm. So in that three days that you're there for one hour of that 
three days, the, that is your board. So you go there with all your financials and all this stuff, and everybody does the homework, and everybody's looking at everybody's thing. So for that one hour, he's the chairman of your board, and you're figuring out your business, and now you have all this input from these phenomenal business owners. Yeah. And it was like, wow, what a great idea, you know? Sure. And then the next hour, it's somebody else's business, and we're trying to help them figure it out, you know? So I feel like, um, you know, a lot of times us as entrepreneurs, we definitely want to do a lot ourselves. But then, man, there's so much information and so many people and so many, like I said, success lo loves to talk. They love to leave clues. They love to follow these things. And I would not be anywhere I am if I didn't have. I mean, I, right now in my life, I still probably talk to four different mentors, like pretty, pretty constantly, yeah. you know. And sometimes it's a peer. It's not even a mentor. Sometimes it's just... You know, you're having a bad day, and let's say you got a, you know, you got a hundred thousand dollar problem. You can't talk to your employee about it. No. You got to talk to somebody that understands. Like, oh man, dude, I got, well, I got. It's not just that you want to keep that employee lifted. Up, yeah, hundred percent. So you don't want to be downing on them. Yeah. yeah like when I plus lost... the information they're going to give you is not going to be the information. Oh you're yeah. For. Well, they, you, they... well, you say a hundred thousand to an employee, they're just like hundred thousand. Like I've never seen that in my whole life. You know. Sure. And you said there, how many times have you wrote a check for a hundred grand? And you're just like, well, <laughs> we'll make it back. You know. Hopefully. Sure. So, uh, but I think by having that, that's the foundation you need to be able to grow, you know? And, and I, uh, so for the first five years of my business, books were my mentor and I loved it. And I feel like, and I still even think about it. Like sometimes, what did I suck at this week? And I, and you know, and that's like maybe time management. Like you say, Hey, John, you got to get out more. You know, I finally got a bookkeeper, but you know, it's my daughter, which is great, you know, but um, but it does alleviate me to build, you know, like sound shield, you know, like we're expanding a lot with that. So, but, um, but yeah, I, t I would say locally wise, you know, if someone impresses you, man, ask them out to lunch, you know, Hey man, I'd love to buy you lunch. You know, I just want to pick your brain. I'm trying to figure something out. I mean, I love, it. I've had people ask me and I've, I've always gone to lunch with people and I'll usually pick up the check just because, you know, and I'm just like, Hey man, you know, l let me help you figure this out. And I have, um, uh, a tablet. I think you know the remarkable tablets. Yeah. So yes. I, Thank you, John. Yeah. He wrote, I love those. I was ordering that. I couldn't get yours yeah. fast enough, so John already had one. He gave yeah. me yours, so I could so, do it. And he took the second one. Yeah. So I. Uh, but I have a folder for multiple people, and it's like our folder when we meet, and I can write a notebook. Okay, man, this is what we said we're going to achieve in three months. Or where are we at? You know, and you know, and I, yeah, and I think it's uh, unfortunately is, you know, out of ten people, maybe one one will follow through. You know, and I check on people and stuff, and so. That's tough as someone that's trying to help people, you know, because yeah. you're just like, man, you didn't achieve what you said you wanted to achieve, you know. And no, I think that's a really good point because mm -hmm. we we did an episode about mentorship and mentee and part part of like being a what is a good mentee mm -hmm. because I I don't want to spend time with somebody who isn't serious about Absolutely. moving forward because there's somebody else who would move would kill forward. For that time. Yeah. Absolutely. And so it's like I kind of have a saying where we don't we don't try to sell tickets to the game when people don't want to go to the game. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and so it's not there's not this persistent like we would have with our kids like, hey, get this done, get this done. It's like, no, we, we just don't do that with other no. adults. But, you know, I, I love the the building block that you started, like you realized that you knew you needed more knowledge. Mm -hmm. And so you started with books. Books were really low hanging fruit. They were easy, attainable. You were e you were able to reflect on yourself and go, I, I want to grow in this area. This was a tr this was a real challenge for me this week. And now books are more accessible than ever. Like yeah. there's the the Audible books yeah. and the Audible subscription. And like I feel like the the fifty book goal a year is not a thing anymore because mm -hmm. it's just opened up with MP3 players and. We know there's another, there's other great services now too. Like there's this great one called Mentor Box, and it's seven bucks a month, and basically it's a summary of a book, and then so you can you can pick out like uh, you know 10x your life or something, right? And you know you don't have time to read 300 pages, but it summarizes it into like a nice little workbook that you can read in probably a half an hour, and you're getting the main key points out of it, which is awesome. I found that to be great, you know, and uh, you know one great I think tidbit I learned from uh, from Keith was he had this thing that we have to think about with every business that it's like every business you have four hats right so in the beginning so if you can like and i love looking around and seeing all these old articles you know it's like and when you first start it right you're the artist you know we don't think about anything but it's like we love doing this you're the artist man the wall has to be this color the floor be you know all these beautiful things 
And then, so you're having fun. That's the best time because you're like right in the middle of it. And then, you know, but then sometimes you got to be the manager. You got to deal with people and you got to do stuff. So now, you know, you're, you, you stepped up from an artist hat and now you're like five, 10 feet above and you're just running this business, right? Yeah. Then, you know, then you have these other moments where you have to be the owner. Now you're signing a lease for something. You're buying equipment. You're doing all this stuff. Now you're 30 feet above. But he said that the most important hat is the board level. And he said, that's 100 feet above. And he said, this hat's the most important because he's like, the board's only job is what's the downside? And what's the downside and can we live with it? And he said, so he goes, so that's the part where that you need the most, you know, you need the most experience and most guidance. And then so like, say you're going to go buy, you know, a, a new bus, right? And you're like, okay, we got to spend... I don't know what's what do things cost quarter million six hundred thousand six hundred thousand okay. dollars for a new one <laughs> for a new one yeah so then the board would be your wife right part of it hey we got to spend six hundred grand you know okay what's well, the downside well nobody will use it you know or something blah 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 whatever sure. then, then can we live with it and I felt like wow when I learned that part of it like how many decisions did we make like that that you know and I thought that that was so key because we all want to be here this is the fun you know but all this other stuff isn't as fun as this part right, you know. Right. So I felt like, okay, I need to be around more people that I can bounce like an idea off of that. And I want them to say what like, the best thing that Charlie's ever done in my life. Top three things was I called him and I said, Hey man, I can rent this spot next door. What do you think? He said, John, turn around right now. Is, is the bay so full? You can't fit nobody in the bay. It was July. And I had like two cars in the shop. And then he, I was like, ah, eh, no, there's like two cars here. He's like, you don't need it. And man, it saved me like so much money to this day. And I had the opportunity again, and I brought up the story, and I was looking at the bay, and Aaron was like, we should get it, we got to sign the lease. I was like, Aaron, turn around, let <laughs> my car's in the bay right now. And then sure enough, we had like maybe four or five cars in there, and I was like, man, we don't need it. And thank God, because we've had, like this year, we've had a tough summer, and the rent would have been over 10000 a month, and yeah. you know, it had been the scariest thing in the world to find that you know, cash flow. So someone like, yeah, like a Charlie, or like my guy Marcel, or my guy Brian, mm -hmm. It's so nice to be able to have someone just to bounce an idea off of. And I love to get shut down because Jason was the same way. Like I talked to Jason and I'd have six ideas. He'd always find the seventh, you know, and now I'm trying to be finding the seventh, you know, or the eighth idea or whatever it is, you know. Yeah. But, uh, but anyway, yeah. So I, I think that, yeah, I would definitely not be here with, if I didn't have someone like a Charlie or these guys in my life because, you know, we want to do everything, but it's just, man, you know, you can't. It's just impossible to, to, to run every aspect of it and grow it to scale. Well, and believe that you know everything about everything. That's right. Like that's really, to be able to be um, somebody who receives from a mentor, you have to have a level of humility. Absolutely. And if you're always the guy who has all the answers or the lady that always has all the answers, how are you able to receive from others mm -hmm. if, if you don't have space? So it's like, that's probably the, the solid key. I look at that as like our brain. Mm -hmm. We use such a minute part of our brain. Our brain's so big and so there. Mm -hmm. And we think we're so full of knowledge and we really, we, we haven't even scraped the surface oh, of it yeah. yet. I mean, mm -hmm. and knowing now, kind of in the last six months of our journey of where we've gone, and especially with uh, joining Danny's group now and Danny Morrell, um, he has scratched that surface in a way that we have figured out that like, and I laugh about that. Like, we don't really know shit. I mean, when I say that, I laugh about that because in our own mind, we are leaders in our industry and we try to be and we try to really do it. But really, like, we have just scratched the surface and talking to some of our team members here and like we're at, you know, and we're going to probably be in a, the $15 million range this year in revenue. Like, they're like, we need to expand. We do this. I'm like, there's so much opportunity here that we don't just have locally. to expand mm -hmm. locally that we don't have to set up another shop in Fairbanks or California or whatever else it yep. is there's so many opportunities here that we can go into and it just matters what we want to spend time in what's our highest yielding uh things that we want to do that's going to be fun and something we're going to enjoy yeah. i don't want to get into something that's going to be super labor intensive and yeah. something that's going to do this stuff because that takes more time and people and stuff like that and as you're going to be 47 this year 48 48 you're 47 this year i'm going to be 56 mm -hmm. so i've got you by eight years mm -hmm. um so i want to look at what what my second half of my journey of like is going to be in where we can go with it. And so as we choose, just like you're saying, we choose to get external um, mentorship and, and like in a group like you, we're in this group, like this inner circle group. And I know it's not cheap to be in. It's a 30 or $40,000 investment a year to be inside this mm -hmm. thing. But the, the people that we get access to and we talk to are all business professionals that are growing their company 
or they're these mega level companies. I mean, we got invited to go to India to a group like uh, that Danny does. And the guy's like, you'll be our VIPs. You go up here, don't worry. About it. I'm like, well, we will pay our way. She's like, you are a guest. Mm -hmm. But this guy's speaking to five or 10,000 people at a time mm -hmm. with a massive group, with this huge, uh, like like a Cardon, like these other ones. But the difference in these ones, I feel like we're getting, John, and the mentorship that we're getting is that we're not just getting financial advice, we're getting health advice, we're getting mind advice, we're getting outside of ourselves. It's, it's more of a holistic approach than just running the numbers now. Way different. And like, that's where the, the smaller groups that we were in before, that's where there wasn't an awareness there. Absolutely. The 2020 groups, amazing groups. Our, yeah. our 2020 group that we had, the peer groups really helped us in just this. Our basic, I, I feel like it's our bread and butter. It was our bread and butter and it was our basic ones. It kept us alive and kept everything going. It kept building it. But now looking at some of these different mentors and different people we're having here, it's like they, they're they taking it to a whole different level. Mm -hmm. And this is the level we're at now that we're learning. And so when you're talking about getting external uh, mentorship. It's not possible to get there. So much different to here a higher in Alaska. Level without help. When it, when it, isn't that the beautiful thing about being an entrepreneur? And it's it's like I always say about like weightlifting as well, right? Like you can you can be the baddest dude in the gym, and there's always somebody that's going to come in and just outwork you. Sure. And in business, you know, like you know, oh man, we're killing it. Everything is great. Everything is awesome. And then you meet somebody, and you're just like. This guy does ten times the business we do, and, and he, he just, does half the half the time. Yeah. He puts and half the effort, and it blows your mind. And then, like you know, um, I was in Tahiti last year, and uh, it was pretty awesome. Uh, this uh, it's the most beautiful place in the world, and uh, so I was on Morea, and there's this big beautiful bay, and every couple of days you see a new yacht come in, okay, and uh, so you're always like, man, who's on the yacht? How cool is that? And then it's kind of cool because the levels. So the first day, there was like a nice three deck. You know, you're like, well, wow, that's a nice boat, man. That's cool, you know. And it's there for a couple of days. Like, wow, living the life. And then that guy leaves. And then the next day, man, like a five deck comes. You're like, whoa, that's a nice boat. That thing must be like twice as much, you know. Right. And then like the last day, this boat comes in. And this, this boat's so big, it can't even come in the bay. This dude's got like a crane on the front and helicopter pads and all kind of stuff. And he has, you know, the matching little dinghy boat and stuff. And then... You know, you're just like, wow, like this is a whole other level. You know, to have like, that kind of a boat, that's like stupid bread, you know. And then the, finally the last day, this humongous sailboat, looks like Jeff Bezos' uh, big old sailboat, pulls up in the middle. It's a humongous, like four mass, I mean, humongous boat. And and, and, and that's, I feel like that's business, you know. Like you guys are meeting a different group. And that's what I love about Tony Robbins too is that it's not just a business. It's like your health is wealth. You know, the, like the cold plunges and this and that. He's like, you have to do this, you know, because what good is everything if you're not there to enjoy it anyway, sure. you know, and you can't pass it along. So all of us on our health journeys and, you know, why didn't we think about this in our 30s? You know, we were indestructible back then. We just then. didn't know. We didn't yeah. know you, what we you didn't don't, know. Our biggest word, we don't know what we don't know. Don't know what you don't know, man. So. I mean, and that's the whole thing. I think the knowledge part of it now is coming to us as we get older. And I don't know if we could receive it as well as we did in our 30s and mm -hmm. 20s because we were running and gunning. I mean, we were just trying to figure out how the bills were going to get paid, how we're going to get this, how we're well, going to... I think it was a combination of crisis. Like, we were in survival mode in a lot mm -hmm. of that season. And then the other piece was that we were not open to receive yeah. and um, because we and I think part of that mm. came from other people like telling us that that's dumb or hey we're not like you kind of get some thick skin a little bit yeah. when you're you're because you're sharing with your friends at first like hey I got this idea and they're like dude like what are you talking about mm -hmm. like that's crazy like mm -hmm. that's that's why would you want to do that you know but they don't know what you are seeing yeah. and so it, it it's it's almost like you overcompensate for the surround the people that are around you when you're growing up mm -hmm. or that you're coming up on and and then you figure it out that it's like wow like the key is to have some vulnerability and to be open to receive you and, also have that negative and positive energy flows yep, into it and love yep. flows i mean mm -hmm. that energy is such huge and when you're around a, a group that has positive energy i mean i never really knew the energy levels of some people and mm -hmm. I'm a high frequency person. Like I'm really active. I'm really that, but I never really felt energies from other people before when I, and now, and now I, it's like when you see it, you can't unsee it. Absolutely. Like, it, like no. when the accident happens in front of you, there's no delete button. Mm -hmm. You, you, you've seen it forever. And I don't say this is an accident. I think it's more of a gift that you can see different energies and people that you can be around. And you can see somebody that's just like the most negative person in the world. And you're like, 
Okay, that is sucking me dry. Yeah, and, and the energy is like it's it's a you're as strong as your as your strong as your best battery in your battery bank. If one's dead, you don't have a 24 volt system. Yeah. You are now dying, and the car won't start. If you have all your batteries running on the same system, everything runs smoothly in the way it's supposed to. So you're as good as your weakest link. And I, I and I'm not saying anybody's weak. I just don't think that it took me 55 years to figure it out. So. I'm hoping that talking these podcasts as we're doing in here, that it doesn't take a poor guy that's 22 or 24 yeah. or 27 or All 50 to just keep spinning the wheels. How can they look at this in a positive way that they can just relook at things? And I think it's sometimes as a horse is going down the road and it, it, there's a reason they put blinders on the mm -hmm. side of them because it wants to focus what's going down here. If he can see the car coming out from the left or from the right, he might divert and not go the way he's supposed to and cause mm -hmm. an accident. There's reason why um, some people have blinders on, but once you start to take those blinders off and you see more of what's going around you, you're like, wow, there's way more out here than we thought it is. There yeah. is so much more that we can do and choose to do and be more purpose-driven. And we can work at the level we're working at now, but we don't have to work 50 hours or 70 hours or 100 hours to achieve the same goals. We just got to re-divert our energy into the, our employees and to our people mm -hmm. that we can do this and say, hey, we're choosing now just to be a 20 hour work week or we're choosing that we're gonna only put 100 hours in a month. We are working towards a level that we can sustain it because in our mind, we've always been the person that did it all. But as we've grown and we've looked, we realize that we don't really have to do it. It's not on autopilot, it's not anything else. It's purposely driven and how we're gonna set our management up and for our team so they're gonna be taking some of it because we're entrusting them. And they're only gonna grow as far as we let them grow yeah. if we continue doing everything for them. So we had an instance, it was just the other day that we had like a, a crisis at the airport and they're like, we need four or five people to go here and do this. And what I told them was like, we're not gonna send four or five people. This is what we there get paid for that, happened, that we do. And we have there. to let our team or our other vendors know that it has to go this way. And if we always are there to save them, they're never gonna be able to save themselves. Right. So it was a little bit tough for some of our newer managers to understand that. But after realizing what we we're doing, they came up and talked to me and said, I understand what your, your yeah. goal and purpose is. It wasn't that we didn't want to serve that client the best way we could. We wanted them to know that they limit us in how many people we put out there and we are going to do the 100% of what they are going to do. But every time that they, we need 17 or 20 people out there and we only get 12 allowed out there, we can't be that bad. They have to either figure out they're going to need to put more people on or they're going to have to subsidize that. And he's like, well, you know, one of our people might get yelled at or they might be saying, why aren't you helping with this? And I said, then we just need to redirect and let those people know why we only have what we have in our resources. Mm -hmm. So I guess it would be me back in the day. It said, everybody jump in the cars and sit down there because we're going to make and, sure we're saving the day. stop what you're doing. It doesn't matter what we're doing. Yeah, and, and it's just such van. a disruptor in how things are doing that. But now we're just realizing. So we made a few phone calls and they were able to make it happen super quickly. Mm -hmm. Nobody got yelled at, nobody did. And it was just redirecting that energy and not a negative energy of like, we got to go, go, go. Repositive that out to our employees and to our staff and let them know we're going to do 110% of what we can to do it. And Athena says, how can you do over 110%? I see that's us going above and beyond what we usually normally do, but we're going to be at the level that they ask us to be at. Well, I think the beautiful thing is when you, when you guys create like this environment that like the staff feel appreciated and loved, you know, like, you know, like you said, feeding them once a month and, you know, you got pieces and hot dogs downstairs yeah, right now. <laughs> like, yeah, you know, when you do, I think like when you do these things that they'll, they'll give you so much more because they love the company. Sure. And they don't want the company to look bad. I know that, you know, 100% with like Aaron at my shop and, you know, my guys that we have that it's like if we got to stay late or we got to do something or we got to somebody sick, you know, some guys are having babies, you know, we got to, you know, somebody's got to work extra, you know, but we all do that because the big yeah, team, yeah, the yeah. big girl. So, so I think, yeah, I think Bach, watching Bach grow through the years and I mean, the culture is incredible. I mean, to, to be able to have such a large staff and you know what i love is like uh you, you know anytime i'm in a, in a car with anybody in a relationship or anything you know we get off the airplane you see bach you you go drive down the street you see bach you're downtown you see bach you know and it's like man you know i saw one of the buses driving down diamond the other day and i was like man there goes charlie's bus i was like man that's so cool i, was like, I remember when he got that thing you know and yeah. it says you know coming from the navigator way back in the day yeah. to yeah. The, the navigator is parked, or the black navigator yeah. is parked out in front of a uh, Terry shop right now. Oh my gosh! Really? That, it, it, the new the new shop that mm -hmm. they're burying, mm -hmm. it's got windows popped out and everything like that. But yeah, mm -hmm. I yeah. mean, I mean, so you think about that to to the amazing fleet. But then you know, I think being your friend for the last twenty five years and then pulling into this place is like I have such a sense of pride 
where I'm so proud and I'm like, man, you know, like, I mean, I was at your guy's wedding, you know, and yep. it's like, you know, to pull in and see the big box fence, you know, like how many times you drive by your fence and it's vertical and you probably don't even think about it now. Yeah. But man, I turn down the street and I'm looking for it. I'm like, where's the flag? Oh yeah. man, look at that. They got their own fence, you know? So, so I feel like, uh, that energy you're talking about, I love to be around that too. Cause you know, how many times you hear some man must be nice, must be nice, you know? And I used to get really sad about that, but now I'm like, it is, man, I worked hard for it. I said, I've been doing this 34 Thanks years, man. Noticing. Yeah, I've been doing this 34 years. I better have something nice, you know. You know, when you get those people comments, say you're mm-hmm. so expensive, things like this, but it, 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 this stuff doesn't come cheaply. We've all worked. We've all been at that bottom thing mm-hmm. where we tried to build it. Remember, you're losing money on labor mm-hmm. and doing all the other stuff. You have to build your brand to where it is now, and then you get to a place that they want to have nice cars. They want to have nice vehicles. We have new Wagoneers sitting out front. We have we just purchased four brand new spreaders from Swicker the other day. And we did that because we need to rotate our fleet. So as we're doing that, it, it costs money. You can't have, you can't, I, I love it, champagne taste on a beer budget. Mm-hmm. You can't want to have Don Perry on when you can only afford Schlitz. Yeah. You know? <laughs> I mean, Schlitz is not Don Perry on. I mean, and it's not we are the Don Perignon. We want to have nice things. And when our employees now walk into our new building and see what they're at, just as your showroom floor, just you have one of the nicest shops in the state, you look at that and they take pride in where they're at. Absolutely. And when they well, when they moved in this new building and look at you knew us back before we were at 54th and we were 54th and we were proud of that. We had an apartment. We lived above 54th. Dude, you were yeah, we proud, had, we, dude. You were proud of 54th. I don't even 54th care. because we were on that. We were open yeah. lot. We didn't have yeah. a place to wash or get it, warm yeah. or do stuff. But then we moved to the 100th and we're like, look at this place, but it wasn't paved. Mm-hmm. We had dusty cars. We had all these things. Look at the growth between your company, our company, and other companies that grew up around us. You look at all the different people, the McKinnon brothers. You look at all these people that were just scratching and trying to make it work and, and had opportunities and, and did it. And the entrepreneurship, one of the things I was going to say earlier, John, is that entrepreneurship takes risk and it takes rewards. And you get risk and rewards. And sometimes you have some failures into it. And your failures you build on. They're Absolutely. your building blocks. And you'll look at Trump, you look at all these major, massive people. Not every one of their businesses were successful. Mm-hmm. Every one of them, they had failures and dumps and they realized when it was time to, to jump ship and they tied to where they, they put more investments into it. And none of those people would be who they are today if they didn't have failures. And you know, we talk about somebody that's a kind of a mentor and Paul Landis. You know, Paul says, I can figure out from GCI, I can figure out and I can save all these employees, but I have to have them have some um, some things that happen that they have to figure out where their mistakes are at or they're never going to be able to build who they are today. Absolutely. So. Well, and that's really it is it's the contrast. That's what shows us when we are, when we're experiencing some of the dark, it really allows us to appreciate the light. And I think kind of like circling this episode all the way back to the, um, to the beginning, it's mentorship is there to be a, a service to those who are willing to receive. Mm-hmm. And when you are a mentor, when you are mentored, you become a mentor because you understand the value of what somebody did for you back then when you needed help. And that's really like our story too. We have got a trail of mentors, the three of us, a trail of mentors that have supported us, encouraged us, and um, kept us off of that island. And sometimes, honestly, we fought to stay on the island by ourselves. Oh, I don't need any help. I've got this, you know, and it's like, it's, it's community is where it's at. And being connected to people that are on, on the pathway with you, that are encouraging you, that are offering you these, these, the uplifting energy that you need to keep going. I think if you hit that on the, the, thought as well as John is is that you want to be around people that you want to respect and you want to be around in the high energy the high frequency the people that are going to build your up because as some we are that energy for a lot of other people but we need to recharge our batteries yeah. with energy of people that are our level or higher and you know that's I always think that level is like you know how do we get to the next step well we have to be around people that are already gone to that next mm-hmm. step because if we stay in a area that is um is we're not the top, bringing it's, the top in the area. Yeah, we're the top of the area. Growing. We're not growing. We're sustaining. And it, do you want to sustain or do you want to grow? And and listen, to the people who want to sustain, that's great. If your family life and your everything else life is 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 where you want to be at, 
stay at that level. That is a great area. I can tell John and myself and all of us can tell you, there's this really great area here you make a lot of money at and you don't have a lot of investment. You don't have a lot of things and you could stay in there and that's a comfortable area and that's a good area and your risk and your reward is perfect. And if you want to grow that and you want to be a bigger company, you have this massive gap that's this gray area that you're not making really any more money, but your responsibility is much more bigger. You have a lot more risk. You have a lot more exposure. And then you're really, you're not making much more money, but you have a lot more time gone. And then you got this little sweet spot over here. And this sweet spot is where we're looking to be at and where we want to stay at and kind of there. And we've kind of gone through a lot of those risk and rewards and those other areas. And we're now- unintended outcomes, (laughs) not Now we're just in a good spot. So as John's in a good spot, we're in a good spot. We want to be around other people who are in good spots, but we want to help everybody get to that spot. And as as John says, in entrepreneurs, we kind of have a story and we don't mind telling that story. If somebody wants to go to lunch with us or talk Mm -hmm. to us or do something, we want to help. Yeah, and we would encourage others who are listening on the podcast to carve out some time for somebody. Don't don't create a life where you're so busy uh, that you're like inching into survival mode in your business. Like you 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 have to be able to have time to to go meet with somebody at, at, for a lunch date for an hour. And the gift that you give is the gift that you receive. Yes, and can I add too? Like you know, Oops. be be clear. Be clear on what the intention is too, you know, like, hey, I'm going to take you to lunch and I know you're busy. You know, I, I have these challenges. But were you ever in this challenge before? Like I'm trying to get to this point sure. or something. And I think if you come into that, you know, looking for the mentor, the mentor is going to respect you too because, yeah, like I like to hang out with people too. But the same side, you know, yeah, we're busy. Like what's the purpose? Yeah, like, yeah, what, what part can I help you with, you know? And then, sure. then let's build a relationship based off of that, I think, you know, and because, you know, you get some people like, oh, how do I start a corporation? And it's kind of like, oh, come on, man. You know. Like, so what part? Are you talking about the legal side? Yeah, exactly. Or, yeah. Yeah. So I feel like if we're a little more clear, like, you know, I, this is the challenge. Or like when I call Charlie, hey, man, anything I should expand my space? You know, and like I said, the best thing he said was he didn't even have to give me 10 minutes. He was like, turn around. <laughs> you know, and I was like, okay. <laughs> but, you know, be, yeah. knowing John well enough for all these years, I know John's mind is to build, 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 and he wants to make it bigger and he wants to make it better. But then I know some of the other thoughts is like summertime's not as high as margins in markets. So when he calls me in June or July, he says, hey, I have a chance to get this thing. I'm like, well, I, how many cars do you have in the shop right now? What does that make sense? And I know as, as challenging as are his employees to get that, if he gets another, say, 5,000 or 8,000 shops, can he find the staff to be able to help build that shop would you be able to be able to do that so knowing kind of john and let him in let me in his mind where his business is at lets me help him and i'm an outsider Mm -hmm. i have nothing to gain or lose of this but just try to help and i think that's where we're all at now Mm -hmm. is we're trying to help because in our mind it looks good because i try to come up with some crazy things for the thing i'm like shit we can go buy four more ambulances right now and she's like shit we got six out there right now we're only using three what are we doing with it you know why are we gonna get more (laughs) Well, Well, and a good deal is sometimes not our deal. It might be a good deal, but the one thing you have to look at is a good deal is great, but another deal will always come along. It's so true. And, and, you know, when you think you have to have it, it's probably when you shouldn't have it. Absolutely. If you have to have it now and you're hitting that button, damn, I'm a eBay and all those damn websites and shit. I get into locking and I get proud and I'm like, check, no, that guy's not beating me. But <laughs> now I can just realize I don't have to do that. There you go. So mm-hmm. thank you. Hey, you know, you can always ask questions. You can put things up there. You can ask us questions. This, uh, John Schwartz, your, your perfections, what's your website? What's your email? Yeah, Perfectionsautosound.com or uh, J Swartz, S-C-H-W-A-R-T-Z at CompuStar.com. And then, uh, oh, check out SoundShieldUSA.com as well. So, you no, know, we didn't really talk about it a lot about his challenge issue events, but we'll have John on another episode. It really talks about his other business that he started and yeah. founded and helped do it. And he's done it twice now, and he's really got another good product that we can get into. And that'll be another discussion for another time. And yeah, if you can know. check the episode, our, our last episode, he does mention some of the wares that he has and, and what sound. Sound shields. And I'm sure we can put some links on there for him too, so you yeah. can follow John and see where he is at with yeah. his company and everything like that too. Yeah. So yeah, if you definitely want to challenge, uh, start, uh, leave your company and start another company and compete against yourself. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, but you already know what the other person's doing. That's, That's the nice right. part about there it. You go. Yep. <laughs> All right, thank you guys. Yeah, well, thank you so much for, for having joining me. us. Yeah, Check thanks, us out on um, raiseupmindset.com. You can post a question there or watch our latest episodes. So bye. All right, bye. bye. 
Thanks again for joining us on the Raise Up podcast. You can find us at raiseupmindset.com. Our socials link there so you can get anything that you need from Instagram, Facebook, our shorts. You can download the podcast straight from the website. If you're listening on another platform, please like, subscribe, share. We're just getting the word out on really the encouragement and um, propelling the entrepreneurial movement in our communities. Thanks again for listening. We've got something special at the end of our episodes now where it's called the Raise Up Response. This is just a sheet that if you wanna dive deeper, it's got questions, it's got takeaways from the podcast, click the link below and you can request it. It'll take you to our website and find it in your inbox. Thanks again, bye-bye.